then ticking over, making a low gurgling noise, his tongue flying. <laughs> that sounds like a that sounds like a boat's engine starting, and the people in the town would say, There go the brave boys. Then when the engines were warmed, they turned them off. Later they would start the three engines again, blop, blop, blop. And the townspeople would say, Here come the brave boys back again. Thank God they are safe. Meanwhile, they'd never left the harbour. He told me how the wrens would go to the butchers inquiring, what do you have for the brave boys today? Desmond and Mike compare attire. They are similarly dressed with handkerchiefs sticking out of their jacket pockets. <laughs> Mike has a silk bow tie and I ask, is it a clip on one? And he says he tied it himself and Desmond replies, only the Irish wear clip on bow ties. <laughs> Adam tries to entice Desmond into having a snowball, but Desmond insists on red wine, saying, red wine is my staple, I'll have it for breakfast, lunch, and supper. And by the looks of it, he's had all three. <laughs> Desmond good. leans over and tells me, not for the first time, that Americans mispronounce things, and when coming into an Irish pub for the first time, order a genius and a mother whore <laughs> for Guinness and Murphy's. He repeats mother whore three times really loudly. It's the Irish for Murphy's. Anna is upstairs to Tyge and Kian. She tells me later that they said to her they could not believe she was 20 as they felt older than her and that she was still childish. <laughs> oh, the wonderful illusions of teenagers. <laughs> John and Jerome arrive with cooked goose and gifts. John's John with crutches, still limping with his healing hip. Mike sees Jerome and goes over to charm, to, charm, to charm him, asking, what's your name and where are you from? Jerome was explaining, when asked why, he'd been in Ireland for so long, 20 years, that he didn't want to live in his native home because he did not like French people. That Ireland was his home. Desmond arose unsteadily from his chair and lunged forward, <laughs> falling against another chair, roaring, There is no home! There is no home in Ireland! <laughs> <laughs> Alfred looks at me with a little wry smile and says, Here we go. Desmond, and, and then says to Je Desmond gently, Come on now, it's Christmas, as she must have done dozens of times with her own father. <laughs> Anya helps Paula and they work efficiently as they can in the tiny narrow kitchen. They are similar, Anya and Paula. <laughs> Efficient, capable, bossy, slim and vegetarian. <laughs> 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 the meal is nearly ready and we find our places at the table. Anya, who can't bear to sit next opposite to Desmond, switches to Anya the wit, plays name tag with John the hip. She's sitting next to me, Susie the flutey, away from Desmond the rogues and manic. Gaze. The table is laid with red tablecloth and sprig and holly in the centre. Paula lights a candle and says, this is for our mum, and places it on the kids' table. They lights tea lights for the absent friends and families, one for John's mum and sister, one for his sick dad, and one for my dad and brother. The centre of the table flickers with lights for the dead. John comes and switches his place name with Anya, saying he needs somebody to put his crutches and sits down next to me. We put you next to Desmond, we joke, and Anya sits down. <laughs> she sits opposite me between Africa the Circus and Julie in the Eye, Mike the, the Free Thinker at the head and Paula the Tempest at the other, next to Adam the First Word, who leans over and fills Jerome the Je ne sais quoi's glass with red wine. <laughs> Paula serves Christmas dinner, brown bread with smoked salmon, capers and leaves with excellent quality olive oil to start. Anya asked if I like more leaves and tosses them into my plate. <laughs> Desmond is demanding that Jerome listen to him. He is the professor. He calls him an idiot and says, you must listen to me. I am the professor. I have written 35 books and he smacks his hand on the table. Do you know what the I am big pink is? <laughs> Against each other as he talks or roars. He needs some fixident. 
And had I known this, I would have got it for him for Christmas. As it is, he's the only one without a present to open. The young ones want to start opening presents, so we start handing them around. There is a flurry of wrapping and people standing up to give thanks. Desmond sits, his drunken old eyes full of confusion, and asks, why am I here? <laughs> because it's Christmas, says Jerome. But I was collected from my house, picked up like rubbish, Desmond says mournfully. The last straw comes with, with Desmond shaking his finger in Paula's face, saying, Know your place, woman! <laughs> Paula's eyes flash with anger, but she keeps silent. Adam has had enough, and he stands up and whisks his half-eaten plate away to the kitchen and says, That's it! I'm taking you home! Come on! <laughs> but where are his teeth? I say. And I'm his food! <laughs> Christmas, happy Christmas, until next year, my friends. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Sycamore, not a big. Oh, wow.